Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and we're continuing our SIBO series. In part one, we talked about SIBO. However, in today's video, I want to review some of the more common symptoms that we see with SIBO. But even more importantly, I really want to just share with you one of the biggest mistakes that I see being made by those people who suffer with IBS that, that literally is just causing years and years of ongoing suffering. Now, the main symptoms of SIBO are those that mimic irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. So again, these are going to be things like constipation, gas, diarrhea, bloating, uh, intestinal cramping, and typically we, we see these things within 30 to 45 minutes after eating, okay? Now, I've heard patients describe it like this. No matter what I eat, Dr. Hagmeyer, I feel like I swallowed a football. Or, you know what, Dr. Hagmeyer, the, the, the overwhelming, you know, bloating, I just feel like a stuffed sausage. Now, what's frustrating is that for many people who have these symptoms, they often go, they get tested for celiac disease, they may get tested for inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's, maybe they get tested for ulcerative colitis, um, but when those people get their test results back, hoping that finally they're going to have really some answers, everything comes back normal. And, and so by exclusion to these inflammatory bowel disorders, many of these people are just diagnosed as having IBS. Okay. Now, if you're like most people that have IBS, you're going to spend the next 10 or 15 years of your life really just searching for answers. You're going to be going from doctor to doctor to doctor. You're going to be experimenting with just the gamut of medications and supplements with empty promises. And in the end, there's going to be little to no improvement in your condition. Okay. You're going to be, again, on all sorts of, of over-the-counter medications. You're going to be on antispasmodics. You're going to be on antidiarrheal medications. You'll be on stool softeners perhaps Miralax, Imodium, Amitsa, and literally just the list goes on and on. And I don't want to see that happen to you, okay? So if I've just described to you, or if I've just described you, please, please, please pay attention to what I'm going to share with you. What I've found is that many people who have suffered and have been labeled with IBS have SIBO, this small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Not only have I seen it in my office, you know, working with patients, but even several studies to date have shown that upwards of 80% of individuals who have IBS, they have SIBO. But that's not all they have, okay? This component could very well be one of the missing pieces of your health uh, puzzle. But if you suffer with IBS, and I just described you, please visit my website, watch my video, learn more about my 10-step IBS recovery program. The video that I put together explains some of these other causes uh, in conjunction with SIBO. And I don't want to give you the impression that SIBO is the only cause behind your IBS, okay? There is never one cause as to why we get sick, okay? What I would tell you is that having worked with, with several hundred patients that have IBS, once you begin correcting these multiple underlying factors, including SIBO, the improvement in one's health can be absolutely amazing. I will tell you that I've seen patients who have suffered with years of psoriasis and eczema. I've seen it clear up. I've seen uh, insulin-dependent diabetics cut their insulin dosage by three quarters, okay? 50%, 75%. I've seen patients unable to get pregnant, have healthy babies. I've seen patients who have suffered with years of brain fog and fatigue and thyroid problems clear up and feel normal again for the first time in 30, 40 years. I've seen patients who can't lose weight and have spent thousands of dollars on personal trainers lose weight because they were unable to clear up the gut. And that's just the top, that's just off the top of my head. There's so much more to that. I've seen women whose faces were all marked up with terrible acne. I've seen that clear up. So if you have SIBO, the good news is that once it's identified and you start a treatment program, many of my patients notice anywhere between 50 to 90% improvement in the first 90 days of care, okay? So please, don't give up. You just haven't found a doctor who is really willing to, to dig a little bit deeper and investigate the cause of your irritable bowel syndrome. Now, in my next video, I want to share with you tips on preventing SIBO, okay? So stay tuned.